Greetings, I'm Berent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. We are continuing our campaign, and we're on mission two, the Flying Dutchman. Now, in the last episode, I asked for some feedback as to how we should end the mission. Should we either take ending two, where we blast the platform and destroy everybody there, or do we do ending three, where we just take off nicely and we don't actually hurt anybody? I got some great feedback, and I said that I would go with whichever one got the most votes. Well, everybody put me kind of in an odd situation because it actually tied. Both ending two and three had the same amount of votes. So sadly, that falls to the first player, which technically, I guess you could say is our soldier. And what would our soldier do is how we're gonna have to think about it. I, it, no matter which one I choose, I know I'm going to disappoint half the people. I think what we're going to do is fly away normally because, in theory, military people don't want to probably destroy civilians. But somebody did mention that you're hurt, you don't really know what's going on, you're probably just trying to get out, you want some revenge, so you could take them out. Ah, oh, it's a tough call. Okay, we're going to go with ending three. That's, that's what I'm going to do. I hope I know that probably means I disappoint half the people. So we're going to go to mission two, the Flying Dutchman, and we're going to to take ending three and begin our next mission. So if you're excited to see what happens in mission two, then I need you to meet me at the table. So selecting ending three, all it tells us is if you have the choice A token, go to ending four. Otherwise, go to mission two. So we don't have the choice A token, so we're just going to go on to mission two. Beginning mission two, we're going to start right here. It says if you have the choice C token or don't have the choice B token, go to intro one. Otherwise, go to intro three. Well, we do not have either of these, so we're going to go right to intro one. And it says... They were onto us faster than we expected. Making a jump when several rail guns are ripping your ship to shreds ain't easy. Only the best military pilots can do that. It seems we have one. Aranda suffers battle damage. Look for appropriate rules in the following mission. If you have the choice C token, go to intro 2. Otherwise, go to intro 3. So we do not have the choice C token, so we're gonna go right to intro three. Intro three, friend. The jump was rough, but it was not the only reason why we were shaken. Going from your regular workday to being a fugitive takes some adjustments. Two bad things weren't about to slow down. Still receiving? Yeah. Where the hell are you? Hold on, we're losing signal. Good question. Where did you take us? To the middle of nowhere, I punched the first random coordinates that came to my mind. Should I? No. Bring him back, but tell him nothing. Okay, we're back. I've blinked far enough to disappear from all sensors. Clever girl. Still, you'll need help, and I can provide. Really? Weren't you just a friend from another ship? No. Don't tell me you also believe in fairies. I am the Astro Workers Union. We had an operation in the command room on Sedna. That's how I knew about you. The Astro Worker Union? The one that bombed storage facilities on Mars and sent anthrax to the CEO of Sundrop? All fighting for the rights of ungrateful bystanders such as you. But we're missing the point here. Within the last 10 years, several ships have gone missing. You may have heard the rumors, even though corporations and the government try to keep it under wraps. It seems you were about to join the list. Now we have a chance with your ship. We can discover what was happening to these other crews. We have teams of scientists and researchers waiting on standby. I'm sending you the rendezvous point. Hold your horses. We have tons of structural damage. We can't fly anywhere. Damn. Oh, come on. It's not like you have any other... Holy crap! That's impossible. Hey, 
You still there? After that short introduction, we're going to move into our Mission 2 setup. It says, important, the character's items, wounds, status, and cards carry over to this mission. I think this is a little bit more text that gives us more flavor for what's going on. Pilot, the sensors show no structural damage of any kind. Might be our lucky day. Scout, finding the nemesis right here, right now, it's simply impossible. Captain, I don't like it either. Soldier. And I don't like being a sitting duck while half the outer system is on our backs. We gotta move. Pilot, I'm afraid he's right. The damage suffered by the Aradine during the jump is far too severe, but we could try to use the Nemesis as our gateway car. It doesn't hurt to get on board and have a look. Captain, right. Get into your suits, everyone. Scientist, even me? Captain, we don't know what's out there. And we don't know when the military will catch up with us. It is best to stick together. Your task. One, infiltrate the nemesis through the open escape pod doors. Number two, assess whether the ship is fit enough for space travel. If it is, use it to escape. So in this mission, we're going to use the fully cooperative mode with the following exceptions. Your team enters through the escape pod hatches. From there on, you'll be guided by the chain of story events. The coordinate cards and destination markers remain unused. The time marker is not placed at the start of the mission. <laughs> and expect the unexpected. <laughs> Our mission setup. It says here, the characters retain their status items and action cards from the previous mission. So let's go look at our characters. So let's go ahead and look at our soldier. Here he is, he's happy, well, kind of. <laughs> he has a serious wound to his leg that we received from the last campaign mission. It says, from now on, the cost of your escape act movement action is two. He also has his assault rifle with six ammo. That's not even in the screen, sorry, here, I'll bring that down. Okay, he's got his assault rifle and he's got six ammo and he still has his normal action deck. Now the items he has, I'm gonna bring this back up a little bit. He's got synthetic food, which allows him to draw two action cards from his deck. That's kind of nice. He's also got his auto loader that we were able to find in the, I think it was the armory, right? Yeah, in the armory room in the last mission. It says the assault rifle has plus one ammo capacity. If the assault rifle is loaded using the energy charge, the action costs zero. That's good. I like it. Now we do have our armor card and we haven't actually activated that yet. So that's our soldier. Let's go ahead and remember what we have for our mechanic. Quickly looking at our mechanic, we still have his magic little figurine here. He has his sawed off shotgun with two ammo. So we have that still. We also have a med pack, which allows us to dress a serious wound or heal a dressed serious wound. We have some chemicals, which can fully load the flamethrower. If <laughs> we have a flamethrower, we don't. He has a serious wound, it's on his arm. So the character has only one hand slot for heavy items or objects. If they have two heavy items, they drop one instantly. We only have one heavy object, it is our sawed off shotgun. I've got his action deck right here, and we have our two character specific cards, but we haven't had a chance to get them working yet. And that is our mechanic. Also, I should add, we have two clue markers from our previous campaign mission. Next, place the Nemesis board on the table, standard ship layout. Place all character models on the evacuation hatch B, map slot A009. Set its item counter to zero. So we're going to do that really quick. So we're going to go ahead and place our evacuation section B, put it to zero, and we're going to add both our mechanic and our soldier. Next, we're gonna place the following rooms face up, surgery in map slot B13, monitoring room in map slot C number 16, engine control on the map slot D number three, and the generator on map slot E07. So let's go do that really quick. So we're gonna place our surgery room right there. We're also gonna place our monitoring room right here. Now I'm just placing them down so that the names are face up. The amount of items on these that it's pointing to, that's not gonna matter. I just wanted to put it down so the names are face up. The engine control room is going to go right here. And lastly, we're gonna place our generator right there. Place event five token plus the on use marker in the surgery. 
Then we're going to place event two token on entry marker in the hibernatorium, map slot F011. Now we're gonna take our event five token and the on use token. We're gonna to put this right in the surgery, followed by the number two and on entry symbol inside the hibernatorium, right there. And finally, we're gonna set up the rest of the rooms according to the standard rules, steps two and three in the rule book. So we're gonna go do all that and then we'll continue. I'm then gonna take the rest of our cards and place them down on the board. Now that we got the board pretty close to set up, we're gonna go ahead and randomly shuffle all engine tokens and place them on the board. Now that we have our board set up, we're gonna randomly place our engines. So we're just gonna mix these up a little bit and we're gonna go ahead and place them on the board. So we have engine number one that goes down here. Engine three is gonna go up here. Engine two is gonna go right there. Engine one again is right here. And lastly, we got our second engine three. It's gonna go all the way up there. Next, it says, do not set up any escape pods on the destination marker. And unlike the last mission we did, all the exploration tokens work just like in a standard game. Place them on both revealed and unrevealed rooms, with the exception of the evacuation section B, where all the characters start the mission. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So we're gonna go ahead and place our exploration tokens on all the places. There we go. Now we have exploration tokens on all the rooms except for the evacuation section. Now we're gonna to come to number 10. It says set up the intruder board according to the standard rules. Step nine and 10 in the rule book. Place a single egg token on the intruder board. So unlike the original way, there's only gonna be one egg token. Then we're gonna go ahead and create our intruder bag using four larvae, four adults, and then plus one per character. So that's gonna be six, two creepers, and one blank. And finally, don't put the time marker on the time track. So we're gonna take our one egg and put it there. Then we're gonna mix these up. We're gonna put three weaknesses down for our intruders. Where they're gonna take our four larvae, our two creepers, our one, two, three, four adults plus two for the amount of characters we have, and then one blank one. We're gonna take all of these, we're gonna place them into our nemesis bag, creating our intruder bag. And there we go, that is all set to go. Now that we got our board set up, we're gonna continue on. It says egg analysis. If you have the choice C token, well we don't, but if we did, which would be really good, we start with the uh, intruder weakness card for the egg already revealed, which would have been really good. So here it shows us the layout of the ship so we know that we got the rooms in the right place. Now we're gonna go ahead and start, and it says completing the mission, it says, the mission ends when the event says so. Please do not clear the board or move any rooms after the mission ends. Oh, that'll be pretty cool. We'll have to see how that all works. So it says start. To start the mission, go to event one on the next page. Event one, detached. Nemesis. Even the name gives me the chills, the largest ship to disappear in deep space. Whoever abandoned it was kind enough to leave the front door open. All four escape pods are gone. The emergency power is still on. There is some oxygen in the main tank. We only need to enable the life support before we freeze to death or suffocate. I don't know if that's good or bad. A part of me was hoping we'd find a dead, unhospitable wreck and head back ASAP. Not something I wanted to see, but after 10 years, we hope it's all clear. Anyway, we won't be able to learn more until main power is back on. So it says we have tasks. It says new task, restore the full power on the nemesis using the manual master switch in the generator room. Put event three token and an on use token in the generator room. Resolve this event as soon as any character uses the generator. Until this happens, you cannot use any room actions. Place the time marker on slot three of the self-destruct track. It represents the dwindling oxygen and extreme cold. If it reaches the skull, everyone dies and the campaign ends in failure. So here's our event three and on use token. We're gonna to go ahead and put that in the generator. And lastly, we're going to place our token on the self-destruct track number three. All right, it's time to make our way through the Nemesis. Our goal is to get there and turn on the generator. All right, so our first player token is here with our soldier. 
he's going to go ahead and draw up to five cards. He's going to go one, two, three, four, five. If you look at your turn order help card, it says draw up to five cards, move the first player token, we're not going to, it's the first turn, and perform actions, two actions each in each player's round until all players have passed. So here are our action cards for our soldier. Well, that's the serious one. <laughs> says we got our nerves of steel, search, search, interruption, which remember in our campaign game, this can sometimes help mitigate something that may happen during the actual story. We have covering fire and that's it. So covering fire, I can discard an ammo to move myself and one and or one other chosen character within your room without triggering intruder attacks. It's actually really good. I can also discard this card during a surprise attack to ignore its effect. All right, so those are our cards. Plus, of course, we have our search cards. So he's got his five cards. Let's see what our mechanic gets. He also gets five cards. One, two, three, four, and five. First card he has is Ingenuity. This thing does a lot of things. I can either discard a malfunction marker, repair the engines, or I can craft an item, and I can use any yellow item as like the that symbol. Looks like a screwdriver. Fast repairs, which allows us to repair things. Search technical corridors, which allows him to use the technical corridors for movement. He also gets pyrotechnics. I can discard this to place a fire marker in a room I'm in, or I can discard a fire marker in the room I'm in. So those are his five cards along with his serious wound. All right, we're going to move on to our two actions. And we're going to start with our first player, our soldier. His first action, now our goal, of course, is to get to this generator and use it. Our first action is going to be using our covering fire to go ahead and move into this room. So we're going to go ahead and reveal the room. And the room we found is the canteen. All right, and we're going to go ahead and see what <laughs> happened to the canteen. Oh, it's got a danger symbol and it has two items. So we're going to rotate this to two. We're going to put our character there. And that danger symbol means we have to put a noise token in every adjacent room to the canteen. Oh, that's absolutely terrible if we're trying to get to the generator. Since we haven't activated the generator yet, we cannot use the room action for the canteen, which is have a snack. <laughs> What that means is I'm allowed to heal one light wound. Additionally, I can choose to scan all my contamination cards in my hand and remove all the non-infected ones. Of course, if it does have an infected symbol, you do have to put a larva on your card. But since we can't use this, instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna discard one of my search cards. I was planning to move to the generator, but I don't wanna trigger this noise. And besides, I can also bring this guy up as well. So we're gonna go ahead and search this room. Meaning we're gonna tick this down to one and he kind of does a dance in the room. And then we're gonna go ahead and draw two cards. Our first one is a med pack, which allows us to dress a serious wound. Oh, I think we're gonna take this because we have one. And then I can heal a serious wound if I find another med pack or I can take synthetic food. He already has synthetic food, so he's gonna take the med pack. And then we're gonna discard this card. We're then gonna move into our mechanics turn. The first thing he's gonna do is he's actually gonna use his technical corridors card to allow him to use this med kit, which will dress a serious wound. Now what that means is I'm gonna go ahead and take my serious wound and flip it over. So I don't have to worry about the effects of the serious wound, but I do still have the serious wound when it comes to how, many da how much damage my character can take. So now that this is used, we're gonna go ahead and discard it. I'm then gonna use my pyrotechnic card to go ahead and move into the canteen with my soldier. Now, moving into a room with another character or an intruder means you don't have to roll noise, which is one of the reasons I did it. Now, I am probably gonna move here next with the soldier, meaning if I roll a two, that's gonna be bad news here, but hopefully we'll take out that intruder. <laughs> let's, just hope, let's, not, let's just hope we don't roll a two. Let's just go with that. So our soldier is actually gonna take a move action with the search card. He's gonna move into the generator and we're gonna to have to reveal this token and I have a very bad camera angle so we're gonna move that up a little bit there we go so he's going to go ahead and see what's there oh it's a busted engine room but there's four if it can focus four different items so we're gonna go ahead and put our disabled token on the generator which I believe means we have to fix it before we can even use it I could be wrong but I'm gonna go with that because technically you can't use a generator if it's not working 
Now that he's moved in there and discovered what happened, he's going to go ahead and roll for noise. Oh, I have to put this on four as well. So we're going to move that to four. Our guy's going to do a dance in the room, and he's going to turn around and face us. So let's see where the noise is. Oh, he got a silent symbol. And since he's not slimed, that means no noise was a, no noise tokens go down on the board. So our next action with this guy is going to be using the nerves of steel card. And he's going to go ahead and also use that med pack to dress one serious wound. So we're going to take our leg serious wound card and turn it over. Now he still has that serious wound, but he doesn't have to suffer the effects of it. We're going to discard this card since we've used it. Now we're going to move into our mechanics turn. His first turn is going to be playing the search card as a move card. And he's going to go ahead and again, move in to where our soldier is. He's then going to use his fast repair card to discard a malfunction marker from the room I'm in. So we're going to discard this malfunction token. So next turn, we should be able to use this generator. Now that he's done his two actions, he's going to be done. We're going to move to our soldier. The only card he has left is interrupt, and it takes two actions to use the room. So he's going to be done for the turn. He's going to pass. And the same thing is going to happen for our mechanic. He's also going to pass this turn. We're then going to move into our event phase, and we're going to go ahead and move our time track and self-destruct track down one. So it's going to go from a three to a two. Our event card then talks about intruder attacks and also about fire damage. Neither of those are going to happen. The next thing on it is we're going to have to resolve an event card. So we're going to take the top of the event card, read it, and we're going to go ahead and resolve it. So it says flammable compounds. So the first thing we're going to notice is our symbols up here. If these two type of characters or enemies, I should say, were on the board, they would move to corridor four if they were not already engaged with or encountering with an actual crew member. Now that that would be done, we're going to move into what this does. It says place a fire marker in the hibernatorium. If the hibernatorium is already on fire, place a fire marker in each neighboring room. Fire does not spread through closed doors or technical corridors. Oh, <laughs> that's not very good. That's where I was planning to go next. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take care of this event. To signify the hibernatorium's on fire, we're going to take one of these really neat acrylic tokens. We're going to put it in the hibernatorium. I'm totally hoping that nobody's actually sleeping in here or it's going to become really bad really quick. The last step of the event phase says that we have to have our intruder bag development turn. So what this means is we're going to take our intruder bag, we're going to shake it up really good, and we're going to go ahead and draw a token out of here. Now this token is going to make us have to do something depending on what symbol is on it. All right, we've got the creeper symbol. So when you draw a creeper token, you're going to replace it with a breeder token. It's kind of like it's maturing. So we can grab either one of these. We're going to go ahead and take this one and put it in the bag. This one we're going to put back with our pile we're not using. And we're going to add this to the pile we're not using as well. With our intruder bag development phase done, we're going to go ahead and move into our player turn. And hopefully we don't have that happen again. <laughs> Breeders are kind of tough. So if we look at our turn order card, it shows that we're going to drop to five action cards and then we're going to move the first player token. Now if I wanted to, when I pass the turn at the end, I could choose to discard any cards I have left. I chose not to. I chose to keep that card because that card I think is a pretty good card to keep. We're going to take four more because you can only have up to five. Of course, unless I want to play my synthetic food back here, I could draw two more. But I don't think that's really something we need to do. I have my taking aim which means I can perform a shoot action with your energy weapon. You can reroll your first result on the combat die. All right, that's not bad. We have our demolition card, which means I can destroy a door in a corridor connecting to the room or, which I sadly misplayed at one point, place a malfunction marker in the room you're in. I can also rest, which allows me to scan my contamination cards, and full auto allows me to discard all my ammo from an assault rifle to perform a shoot action. You deal one additional injury for every two ammo I discard, even if you miss. All right, so we got all our cards, and we're going to go ahead and pass this token to our mechanic, and let's see what cards he got. So he's going to take the first player token, and he's going to draw up to four cards as well. One, two, three, four. Let's see what four extra cards he got. He got his demolition card. I kind of wish I wouldn't have gotten rid of the, which one is it? This one, this pyrotechnic card, because I can discard fire markers from a room. And we're going towards the hibernatorium, I'm sure, pretty soon. We got our computer skills, which allows us to open or close a door in a corridor. 
Or if you're in a room with a computer, I can use its room action without paying its cost. That's pretty good. Search card, and we got our interruption card as well. So our mechanic is all set to go, and he's going to be first. So the first thing our mechanic's going to do is he's going to discard ingenuity and demolition. That allows him to go ahead and use the generator, which is going to trigger the event number three. So let's go figure out what happens to our brave crew members. Event three, power on. Guess it worked. But for every success, there is a stab in the back. Something spooked the Iradian's AI. It was bad enough to receive a higher priority than our survival. Officially, the ship has no higher priority. But then again, officially, we're dead. And without jump drive, the Iradian is screwed anyway. We might be too if we don't hurry. Now I've got a big block of text we have to deal with. It says, you are shaken by your ship's sudden departure. All players discard one action card at random. The power is back on. You can use room actions as normal. Well, that's good. Set the time marker on slot eight of the time track and put the event seven on the jump icon. Resolve this event as soon as the ship jumps. There are new tasks now. It says, visit the cockpit to enter the jump coordinates. Review the main log in the monitoring room. Ensure that at least two engines are operational before the jump and make sure no one is infected before the jump. There's also some new rules here as well. It says, put the event for token plus an on use token in the monitoring room. Put the event six token plus the on use token in the ship's cockpit. When you complete all the tasks listed above, head to the hibernatorium and hibernate. Once all players are either dead, hibernating, or time runs out and the ship jumps, reveal event seven. Any player not in the hibernatorium when the ship jumps is killed. All right, let's go take care of all of that. So we're gonna go ahead and put our time track on eight and our zero seven event right at the end. Next, we're gonna put our 04 on use in the monitoring room along with our <laughs> exploration token. We're gonna to place our 06 with again on use in the cockpit. With that completed, we're going to continue on with our mechanic's turn. Our mechanic is going to use his search card to go ahead and move into the engine control room. I have a plan. So we're going to go ahead and reveal our token. Oh, it's a silent token and there's only one thing in here, but oh, that's really good. All right, so we don't have to roll for noise because it's a silent token. And that's going to go ahead and end his activation. The first thing our soldier is going to do is play his rest card. He's going to discard it to be able to move into the engine room. The next thing he's going to do is discard his demolition card to move into the cockpit. I really want to see what's going on. Those are his two actions. We're now again going to move to our mechanic's turn. And our mechanic has an awesome card. He's got his computer skills card that allows me, if you're in a room with a computer, I can use its room action without paying its cost. So normally it costs two to check the engine status, but instead I'm going to go ahead and discard this to use it for free. So let's check engine three. And it is... Oh, it's working! All right, so we're one for three so far. Next we're going to check engine two. Oh, that's working too. All right, so we've got two working engines. We're totally good. We don't have to go to the engine room. Oh, that's going to be very good. And just because we can, we're going to go ahead and check engine one. And engine one is, oh, that one's damaged. All right, so we know that two and three are working. One is damaged. So if we ever get an event that damages an engine, we know we want to check, make it damage engine one because it's already damaged. <laughs> I don't even know if those cards exist, but our goal is to keep these engines functioning. I still have my interruption card, so I could move if I wanted to, but I'm actually going to save it. I'm not going to discard it. We're going to move into our soldier's turn and he's going to go ahead and perform an action. He's going to get rid of his taking aim and full auto card. I know I'm getting rid of two powerful cards. But we're going to get rid of these two cards because I want to go ahead and use the cockpit. And when we do, we're going to read number six because we did use it. Event six, army signal. Message incoming across all channels. Priority one. This is Mars to the crew of the Iridian. Come in, damn you. Copy that, Mars. Go ahead. 
Oh, good. Where are you? We don't recognize your comm signature. That's not important now. What do you want from us? We did what we had to do in order to survive. And look, you're brainwashed and we can't really hold you accountable. You were used as part of a corporate conspiracy that broke several international laws and agreements. You and your ship are the proof we need to catch your employer red-handed. I'm sending you the coordinates to our Mars compound. We're well equipped to deal with anything you might have on your ship. Or you just want to get your hands on one of those things the Union warned us about you. Union? They're just playing one of their sick games. You can't trust them. Come to us while there's still time. We'll think about that. So it says here, please enter new flight coordinates. <laughs> here we go again. It says all players take a vote and I want all of you to be part of this vote as well. So after I read all the options, I wanna hear what you think as well. And if you don't wanna type anything, that's fine. You could just give somebody's idea a thumbs up and that'll count towards what choice you want me to do. The first option here says set the coordinates for Mars military compound. Take the choice D token. The second one says, set the coordinates for Astro Worker Union's base. Take the choice E token. The third one says, the ship is too dangerous to humanity. Set the coordinates to the middle of the sun. Take the F token. The fourth and final option says, set the coordinates for deep space and try to fight the infestation alone. Take no choice tokens, continue the mission according to the rules described in event three. So there you have it. Those are the four different choices. I'm excited to hear what each of you want me to do. Please leave that in the comments below so I can get a tally of what we should do. And with that, this is where we're going to stop for now. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you liked it. Hit the subscribe button, hit that bell symbol, and then you'll know when the next one happens. Please don't forget to vote in the comments below. Also, feel free to write anything you want. I love to hear from everybody. Will our soldier and our mechanic make it out of the nemesis alive? And which choice will we do? To find out, I need you to meet me at the table.